Welcome to the webinar. Uh, this is the Maya in Motion webinar. Hopefully that's what you were expecting. And we're going to talk about a lot of different things related to creating and editing motion in Maya. So there are lots of ways to do this, and there are lots of different tools and workflows and techniques and whatnot. And uh, I'm just going to kind of talk about all the varieties and then how you can kind of bring those together to create these cohesive kind of effects. So let's uh, dive into it. So for starters, again, you already saw my face in the beginning, but uh, if you missed the, the very beginning, my name is Stephen Roselle. I'm a senior technical specialist at Autodesk. I've been working with Maya basically since its infancy, which is a long, long time, so um, too many years to count. Uh, but I have a long history with it. You might also know me by my alter ego as the Maya Maya guy. So I actually run a blog and uh, a Facebook page and a YouTube channel, which if you haven't checked them out, definitely do. So go like the Facebook page, go uh, subscribe to the YouTube channel and the blog in the area as well. And uh, I talk about a lot of different Maya related things, ranging from modeling to UVs to animation and rigging to dynamics and rendering and pretty much everything. Uh, so if you're interested in this kind of stuff, the kind of stuff I'm doing today, uh, go, definitely go check that out. But again, back to the topic at hand. So Maya in motion. We're going to talk about a few different things as far as motion goes. We're going to talk about uh, just general animation. We're going to talk about general animation tools and the various editors that are associated with those tools. We're going to talk about procedural instancing and procedural animation uh, and how to kind of automatically, uh, kind of in a really quickly intuitive way, create animation uh, without having to manually do it. And then we're going to talk about a similar topic, which is dynamic solvers and simulation. And this is usually physics-related solvers. So things like uh, rigid body solvers and liquid solvers and cloth and hair and things of that nature. So for starters, with general animation, the, the editors that we're going to cover, uh, obviously the timeline, just the most basic view or basic window into time, just allows you to scrub time, allows you to play back, uh, set your frame rate. But you can also do some basic key movement and some basic key editing, uh, retiming and things like that. Uh, at a more granular level, we have the graph editor, and the graph editor is going to be where we can actually get down into the nitty-gritty and we can start to move keyframes around and change tangencies to change the rate of individual curves. At a higher level, we have the time editor. The time editor is basically our nonlinear animation interface. This works on top of keys and curves and allows you to uh, work with lots of animation at the same time to do retiming. Um, changing the rate of animation for a whole bunch of objects simultaneously. And then lastly, we're going to talk about the camera sequencer, which is not necessarily an animation tool in and of itself, but it's related to animation uh, in the sense that uh, you can basically block out your cameras and create sequences in Maya as a way of kind of pre-visualizing what you would ultimately end up with in something like uh, Premiere, uh, where you cut a bunch of rendered shots together. And this allows you to kind of predetermine your, your frame ranges and predetermine which cameras you want to use ahead of time before you actually get to the rendering phase. So procedural animation is another big area of focus that we're going to talk about, and that's going to focus around MASH. So everybody's probably heard of MASH at, the, at this point. So MASH is a, a procedural instancing and animation tool. It's very artist-friendly. It's designed um, primarily kind of for motion graphics, but it's really just a multi-purpose animation system. So it can be used for general instancing, as well as animation, uh, independent of motion graphics. If you're using, you could be using VFX and games for that matter as well. Uh, it's basically a node-based system that allows you to create lots of different types of uh, instancing and lots of different types of motion on that instancing. So you have things like noise and things like uh, wave patterns and things like randomization and uh, you can do things like mirroring and you can do things like driving these effects with audio or other systems like particle systems and whatnot. And then you can combine all these nodes together to create some really interesting effects. So this is just a quick reel that shows you some of those effects. And we'll talk about some of these when we get into the demo. But this is just showing you different kind of uses and different effects that are created uh, with MASH, both procedural instancing as well as the procedural animation. This was actually created by a studio called Mainframe, which was the original developer of MASH. Uh, they actually partnered with us and worked directly with the Maya development team to get their tools uh, into Maya proper so that they can be available to the masses. So 
Another thing that we're going to talk about is simulated animation. So MASH is procedural animation, but when you're talking about simulated animation, you're typically talking about physics-based animation. And we've got a few different systems for this as well. So we have bullet physics, which is a uh, primarily a rigid body solver. Uh, it does do soft bodies as well, but it's primarily used for rigid. Uh, we have nucleus, uh, which has a variety of different uses. And then we have bifrost, which is mainly focused around liquids. So Bullet itself is an open source engine. It's actually um, available via a plugin, but it ships with Maya. It doesn't load by default, so you may not know that it's there. All you have to do is go to the plugin manager, toggle it on, and then this menu set will show up, and it will allow you to create a whole bunch of really basic effects, um, but it can actually get quite complex. So if you go onto YouTube and you just Google Maya Bullet, you'll see a whole bunch of examples. These are just some of the cooler ones that I've found showing bullet in action uh, with some rigid body effects, basically uh, colliding and, and inter uh, uh, interacting and then falling to the ground with gravity with, with different physical properties like mass and friction and bounciness and so on. So the interesting thing about bullet is that it's not only available as a system in and of itself, it's actually available as well as part of MASH. So in the last release, 2018, we integrated bullet into MASH. So you can use bullet completely on its own, or you can instance objects out with MASH, and then you can attach bullet to those instance objects to create some really, really cool and actually quite easy effects. So we're going to talk about this. I'm going to show you some examples of how you would actually do this. So we'll just play through There's a couple of more effects in here. These were also created by Mainframe, by the way, which is, uh, again, the developer of MASH, but working in conjunction or in partnership with the Maya development team. OK, so Nucleus is uh, yet another system. So Nucleus has been around for quite a while. And it's a, it's a unified system. It's a framework for simulating different types of natural effects. So it can actually be used for a range of things. Uh, the most basic example is particles, basically a lot of points moving around in space. But then also in here, which is basically just a, a curve, essentially a line of particles, which creates a curve but is used often for air, and then in cloth, which is basically essentially a grid of particles, which could be a volume or it could be a flat object. These are just showing a few examples. So this is in particles in action. Again, if you just Google Maya in particles, you'll see some of these examples, but this shows you in particles basically following goals and then also colliding with one another. So on the right, you see two in particle objects that are colliding together to create this kind of cool uh, intersecting effect. And then I mentioned in hair. In hair is primarily used for hair. So, you know, the most common cases are going to be for the motion of hair on either a character or on a creature, like you see the horse here on the upper right. But it can also be used for other kind of more abstract effects. So if you need to animate tentacles or if you need to animate antennas or the one in the middle is a chain, all of these can be done with hairs, basically. You can actually attach hairs to skeletal chains to create secondary animation for characters. Uh, or, you know, ropes and whips or, or things like uh, um, the, uh, the strings on a bridge or the cables, rather, on a bridge. So the most useful of all the nucleus, um, by the way, when I say nucleus, a lot of people call it in dynamics. So if you hear the word in dynamics and nucleus, you're talking about the same thing. The most useful probably is in cloth, which can be used for cloth. The example that you see here in the upper right, the flags waving, or you see the 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 sheet or whatever this is flying off in space or the rolling toilet paper, but it can also be used for more soft body type effects. So you see the lower set of examples, which are kind of these, these gooey bouncy balls, this inflated balloon, this kind of squishy uh, object over here on the right. All of these can be created with in cloth. So in cloth doesn't have to be just cloth, in other words. So I'm going to show you some examples of that as well. Now what really gets uh, Interesting, too, is when we start talking about Bifrost, uh, which is a very, very advanced solver for liquid simulation. So uh, this is a kind of effect that you wouldn't necessarily create with Nucleus, and you certainly can't create it with Bullet. But if you wanted to create flowing water or splashing water or, or even uh, more viscous liquids like lava or like goo or mud or gel or, or toothpaste even, things like that can be created with Bifrost. So again, just like the others, if you just Google Maya, Bifrost, there are tons of examples online uh, on YouTube uh, of things that people have created. So you see splashing 
bodies of water, you see waves, but then you see these other types of liquid like this up here, which is, I don't know if that's paint or blood, but this splashing, dripping effect. Uh, you can combine different uh, bodies together to, to blend liquids. Uh, you can create these kind of viscous liquids, which you see on the kind of lower section in the lower right, where you get this thick kind of gooey substance. So a whole range of, of varieties of liquids can be created with Bifrost. So taking it a step further, you can combine the systems together. Now, technically, these systems aren't connected. So in other words, Bifrost is one system, Nucleus is another system, Bullet is another system, but you can actually use the effects together. So this is an example, I'll actually rewind this a little bit, of an artist uh, that posted this on YouTube, and it's basically Bifrost combined with in-cloth. So the bubbles are actually in-cloth objects that are inflating and then basically bursting. And then those are intersecting, kind of floating up in the air and intersecting with a Bifrost liquid simulation. So here you can see the Bifrost with some turbulence added to it. And then you can see as the bubbles burst, they actually displace the liquid and they actually push the, the Bifrost particles um, to create you know, kind of this enhanced uh, bubbling liquid effect. And then at the end, the bubbles come out and they burst and they create this kind of popping bubble effect with the, the end cloth. So it's really interesting when you start to combine these systems together. Here's another example uh, of an artist that posted uh, an ex uh, a rendering of MASH plus bullet plus Bifrost. So they use MASH to procedurally instance all of the berries, and then they use bullet to add weight and gravity and friction and bounce and all that to the berries. They fall to the ground, they collide with the bowl, but then they also are collision objects for the liquid simulation. So the berries, each individual berry is colliding with the Bifrost simulation and the water is then splashing and conforming around that. So that's just another example of how you can start to combine these systems together. So that's kind of a broad overview of the different things that you can do in Maya to create motion. Uh, what we're gonna do next is we're gonna dive into a project. So this is actually something that I created so this is showing everything I just talked about. Um, I just did this kind of for fun, but also just to have uh, kind of an example for each one of these different systems that I talked about. So what we see here is, let me go back to the beginning. In the beginning, we see um, basically MASH for instancing the dominoes. Then we see bullet used with MASH to create the rigid body effects of the pool ball hitting the dominoes, the domino effect. And then we actually see in cloth where I have the, uh, if I rewind this, the squishy kind of bouncy domino right there where the domino gets hit, it collapses and it squishes and it kind of bounces forward. And then that, that in cloth object then is a collider for Bifrost that will basically trigger that kind of liquid simulation. So the domino turns into goo. And then that pushes the other domino forward, and that part is a little bit of fakery, but it's actually colliding with the rigid object, which then in turn continues with another bullet solve to create the rigid body effect. So I'm gonna go over all the different steps that I used for creating this. So we're about 15 minutes in, so for the next 45 minutes or so, I'm gonna break down this sequence so that you can actually see all the different tools and all the different systems that were used we're also gonna be using things like the time editor and the camera sequencer, which I mentioned in the beginning for doing some, some timing stuff.